Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. Today we're going to talk about the first, well, entity, the first unit we are using in the electric field to describe the magnetic field. Uh, and we're talking about the magnetic flux density. I just throw it in yeah, at the moment and then we will make a web and combine these two other, two other values. Yeah. But last time we saw, okay, there is a current and the current is somehow attracted or distracted from, from a magnetic field and so on. So, and is surrounding itself by magnetic field and we want to get uh, to an observation with it. Okay. Therefore, we're going to introduce the so magnetic flux density. There is a symbol for the magnetic flux density. And the symbol, symbol, is B. B is the symbol, and the unit is called one T Tesla. 1 Tesla. It's because of the physicist and not because of the engineer, the inventor Tesla, and not because of the cars. Tesla, right? That's the unit of the magnetic flux density. And the following was observed. Yeah? So when there is a, a moving charge, like a current, uh, then we have a force at this moving charge because of the magnetic field. And so let's say we have here somewhere a charge. This is Q, our charge. And let's say this charge is moving. So it is moving with a certain velocity. With here, somewhere a velocity. Like that. That's the velocity this thing is, is currently traveling with. Make a little error to indicate, okay, it's a vector. So it has a length and a direction. That's the velocity. And now let's say we are adding, we are traveling through a magnetic field. Okay. We're traveling through a magnetic field, and let's say this magnetic field, this B, has also somehow here. That's B. It had also a direction, uh, so it's also a vector at this point where the charge currently is, uh, is a B. Uh, and in between, we have a certain, a certain angle. Uh, and I call this angle theta. <laughs> I could write alpha, but this does everybody. Yeah? So theta. <laughs> it's, it, it's just a name. It doesn't really matter. And then it was observed that there is a force applied to this moving charge. Yeah? How is the force applied? Yeah? We have two lines and those two lines they define a surface a flat surface huh? so those two lines define a flat surface and the force is rectangular to the surface so 90 degree angle to this defined surface there are the forces huh? and in which direction because it can be up or down if we want to call it like that, yeah, so away from, from our, our level, from our surface. Well, here we have to think about the right hand helix and we are turning this direction of the velocity. We are turning in shortest possible way. So in this case, it, we would turn it like that here, tick, 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 into the direction of, of 
the magnetic field of B. Huh? We're turning it into. And the right hand helix now, if we turn this into direct in this direction, a right hand helix would travel up here. <sighs> now I hope I can I can manage to draw it so that we understand what I'm talking about. Here this is the force F. This is the force F and it is rectangular to this. And it is rectangular to this. So there is the surface and it's going up. In this direction should be up. Yeah. You know, it's always a representation, uh, uh, drawing something on a flat sheet of paper and saying it looks three-dimensional. But I hope you can imagine. Yeah? So, turning V into B, uh, and then a rectangular to this surface, V and B defined, there is the force. Okay, so now we have the, we have the force. And it was also observed that... Uh, if V and B, so if this theta is also rectangular, then the force is at a maximum value. Okay? And if V and B point into the right, into the same direction, so if theta is zero, force is always, there's no force, suddenly. So if we're traveling along with the magnetic field, no force. If we're traveling against, exactly against, so if theta is 180 degree, yeah, then we are also having no force. Huh? Oh, so zero at zero, zero at 180, maximum at 90. There is something we know, sine, the sine function. So let's, let's try to, to find out what is defining this force. So this force F huh? equals the bigger the charge, the bigger the force. All right, big charge, big force. So it's Q. Big velocity, big force. All right, so it's also multiplied by V. Right? And of course, big magnetic field, big magnetic flux density, big force. Yeah, big. But I cannot just input a multiplication there, because then we would lack of this directional aspect. So I said, okay, 90 degree maximum, uh, this is not somehow pictured if I just make a point here and make an, a product of those two values. So I don't make a, a point, I make an x. This is the vector product, this is called. vector product and this is exactly describing this so this we are turning you can calculate it you will learn this in math how to calculate this with with vectors in three-dimensional space yeah? uh, so for us direction is given by turning it into yeah and what is the the value of the force so what is the big really the force value so the not, not direction and value, just, just the value of the force. Yeah? This is Q multiplied by the absolute value of the vector V multiplied by the absolute value of the vector B. And now also write it, then it's mathematically also correct that we have, we are talking about the length of the vector. Yeah? And then we have to introduce this, this angle somehow, and I already said it's the sine. So it's the sine of this angle theta. So that's, that's it. Yeah? This is how you can calculate this. Yeah? You know the direction then? Uh, and you know the, the value. Uh, this is the force which is applied from a magnetic field to a moving charge, to current. Uh, actually, if it's current, current is moving charges. Uh, 
Uh, and this is, this is the formula about it. Uh, this is called Lorentz force. German version of this, I had a spelling error. Now I don't. <laughs> I make other errors, promised. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's the Lorentz force, that's called Lorentz force. So Lorentz force is applied to a, a charge, uh, a moving charge in a magnetic field, the Lorentz force is applied. I will try to, to make an example. I'll try to make an example. Let's say we have somewhere an electron. E. Here. There's an electron. E minus. Okay. And this electron, this is traveling here. With a certain velocity. And suddenly, we will enter an area here. There's an area. Here we don't have any magnetic field. And then we're entering an area where the magnetic field is, uh, let's say, going down. B. In the whole area, it's a homogeneous field going down. Huh? And here, when the, when we are entering this magnetic field. V is in this direction, direction. B is in this direction. So we are turning V into B. Yeah? We are turning V into B. So we have to move in this direction. Right hand helix. So actually we will apply a, uh, apply a force here in this direction. Yeah? So this is the Lorentz force which will be applied starting here. Yeah? So actually our charge, what is our charge doing? Our charge is starting to move in this direction yeah? and it will describe a circle with a radius r. All right. So if I take here a point yeah? Why it is a circle? Because here, here the velocity is in this direction. So the force is in this direction. And here we have centrifugal forces. Huh? I call it Fz. Mm -hmm. Centrifugal forces, and this is actually m multiplied by v squared divided by r, the radius. Huh? And here, when we are exiting this magnetic field area, yeah, then we are traveling in this direction. So this should be the trajectory, this electron, at least we think this is the, tra the, the trajectory, this electron is describing. Let's, let's calculate this a little bit. Eh? Here, let's say here B equals, I don't know, 2 Tesla. Pfft, why not? Eh? And here the velocity is very high because I think an electron is at very high speed. It's just flying through the space. Eh? Whoa! It's Porsche electron, a Ferrari electron. At, let's say 2000 meter per second. Ah, not even. Not even uh, Ferrari would reach 2000. It's very fast. It's very fast. Okay. And this, by the way, two Tesla is also very high. Yeah? It's also very high. So we have high velocity. We have high, we have high, uh, uh, magnetic field. So we should see a high force, I would say. So what is the charge? The charge, uh, Q equals E minus, and it's minus ten raised by the power of minus nineteen coulomb. Elementary charge. Okay, this is the charge of the electron, and uh, 
do I need more? Ah, the mass. The mass of the electron. The mass of the electron is uh, 9.11 multiplied by 10 by the power of minus 31 kilograms. Okay. So let's let's first try to calculate the Lorentz force. Uh, so let's write this down here. F equals. And I will use this version already, so I'm only interested in, in the, the value, the length of the vector. So Q. What is Q? It's minus Coulomb. Okay. Then multiplied by the velocity. Okay, then multiplied by the flux density, then multiplied by sine of theta, uh, but it's 90 degrees, so sine of 90 is 1. Uh, I'll write it here once, multiplied by 1. Okay, this should be the force in Newton. If you enter everything in, 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 in uh, SI units, you will receive an SI unit, and this I unit of the of the force is Newton. So, but where to put it that we don't have a reflection? Here yeah, somewhere should be should be correct. So let's see, minus one dot six o two raised by the power of minus nineteen. Huh? Multiplied by 2000, multiplied by 2. Multiplied by 1, I will not enter. And this is our force in Newton. It's a tremendously 6.408 multiplied by 10 raised by the power of minus 16 Newton. I mean, hello? I'm teaching in the department of mechanical engineering. And a mechanical engineer, if it is easy, this is a force. <laughs> this is nothing. Yeah, this is this can be a force. Huh? So if this force is very very low, then we would probably just with a, this radius. Now we're interested in the radius. How quick will it turn? And now it's interesting. We have minus force. We have a minus force. So actually the force is pointing in this direction. Aha! Uh -huh. So our real trajectory will not look like that. Our real trajectory will look like that. Here. Tuk, 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 tuk. Here we will go down in this direction. This is the real trajectory. I hope this is spelled that way. Yeah? Real trajectory. Yeah? Because the force is minus. Yeah? Because force is negative. You have to keep that in mind. Huh? That in actually, we are turning in this way huh? because E is charged with a negative force. So, the f as a charged with a negative, and it's going. In this, this, it, it, it's clear. Actually, it's clear. Now let's calculate the radius. So we have the centrifugal forces here, okay? And the centrifugal forces, and I mean. It will move in this direction. At this point, it will move in this direction. It will not move somewhere. So if those and this force are equal, if those two forces are equal, the radius is exactly right that it is describing this circle line. Okay? So actually, what we can spell is that we have an F set, which equals F, which equals m uh, multiplied by v squared divided by r. Okay. 
And this is actually minus 6.408, 10 raised by the power of minus 16 newton. All right. So I will set this in. I will say Me. What is Me? Uh, equals. Me is 9.11 raised by the power of minus 31 kilograms. Multiplied by V. This we had 2000 squared, because we have to square it. Meter squared, second squared. And now we are going to divide this. R. And this is what we want to know. So, I am doing my little trick, my mathematical trick. So, bring this out on this side, bring this to this side. So, R equals, and now let's note it once again. I will write it now, everything in the same color. 9.11 raised by the power of minus 31 kilograms multiplied by 2000 squared, meter squared, second squared, by second squared, divided by minus 6.408 multiplied by 10 raised by the power of minus 16, and now Newton is kilogram meter by second squared. Okay, let's see if the, if the units are turning out correct. So second squared are gone, kilogram is gone, one meter, one meter, leaving us in the unit of meters. This is good. Yeah? So if we want to calculate a distance and we are getting out meters, so this means the unit already fits. So let's see what this is happening. 9.11 raised by the power of minus 31, multiplied by 2000 squared, divided by minus 6.408, multiplied by 10, raised by the power of minus 16. Oh, this, this I done wrong, minus 16. This is how it should look like, and whoop! This is not that low as we expected. So we are actually getting minus 5.687, 10 raised by the power of minus 9 meters. These are minus 5.687 nanometers. This is turning around pretty quickly, right? This is, this is here, 5.6 nanometers. I cannot, I cannot, I'm a little bit broader than this, yeah, so I cannot, I cannot, if I shoot my electron in this direction, it will turn and it will hit me immediately, yeah, so it's, it's, it's not very, very far off. This is the Lorentz force by the, caused by the magnetic flux density with a little, oh, I don't really, nice stain on my hand. <laughs> this is a stain on my hand. Uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, with a little example. Okay, magnetic flux density. And if uh, there's a magnetic flux density, there's also a magnetic flux. This is what we're going to talk next time. Yeah, next time we're going to talk about the magnetic flux, flux actually. Yeah. yeah, for this time there's nothing more to say. Yeah. So, flux density, next time magnetic flux, for this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.